Hello and welcome to the European Parliament. My name is Catherine Fjord and I'm delighted to welcome Elmar Brock, MEP. Elmar Brock is a member of the Brexit Steering Committee and he's also the chair of the UK advisory group within the European People's Party, which is the largest group in the Parliament. Mr Brock, the British team, the EU team, have been working flat out over the weekend into the night to get an agreement. Are you happy with what came forward and was presented on Monday? No, I think it was a positive surprise. Uh, the withdrawal agreement is not ready. Only parts of it were agreed and the most uh, difficult question, the Irish question, was not solved really. But it's progress and especially the total agreement about uh, uh, the, uh, on uh, the question of the transitional period, which will, would give us uh, appropriate time for negotiating the longer time the future relationship. So the transitional period, you, you, that, that is likely to be agreed upon until the end of 2020? Yeah, that is agreed on. That is agreed. Um, but, I mean, there are large bits that, like you say, haven't been agreed. The Irish question is still outstanding. Um, is that something that the Parliament can live with for the moment? No, that has to be done until October. October. We will only ratify the European Parliament the withdrawal agreement uh, if there is a uh, solution in the Irish question. Another issue that you raise in the motion for resolution of the Parliament is the issue of dispute settlement and governance. Again, this is an area that has remained white in this document. How do you think that is going to be agreed upon? In governance, uh, Britain cannot take pa uh, a part if we come to the institutions and corporations in internal security, external security and other questions. Britain is a third country which has no stake anymore in decision making and governance of the European Union, uh, but we have to find in certain sectors ways of corporations. Your proposal is uh, from the Parliament is an association agreement. How, how, what, what sort of breadth are you looking at in a future relationship? Look, we will have a, a different agreements. That is most probably a, a free trade agreement. Then we have certain agreements on external inter, uh, internal security, uh, on Erasmus, research, and such questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the European Parliament is proposing that it should be have an umbrella. This association agreement would be the umbrella for these different agreements where the details are regulated. Some of those areas, some of those areas, as a former chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, you'll be very familiar with um, the, the external affairs. And the UK seems equally willing to, to work on that area. Can you see any barriers to cooperation in, in, in future? I mean, you, your proposal is that they participate in maybe the European Defence Fund, in PESCO operations. It's quite extensive. Do you, do you think that's something that the UK will be able to sign up to? No, they have to ask uh, uh, for project for project, mission for mission, always whether they will take part or not. But they are not general in that PESCO. Something that often comes up in the UK is that at some stage, further down the line, um, Germany will crack. This question has come up time and time again, and you've probably dealt with it on several occasions. But if I just put that to you again, do you think at the, as the deadline approaches, there will be a movement? The hope dies last, uh, but this will never happen. The integrity of the internal market for the German business is much more important than the trade with the United Kingdom. And if we have a proper uh, free trade agreement uh, that can be minimize the problems, uh, but uh, that BMW will go to Mrs. Merkel, and now you have made a special deal with the British, will not happen. And I know it also from these companies that they will not do that. So this hope is, does not exist in reality. Looking forward, uh, we hope to have an agreement on withdrawal and transition by the end of October. Do you think your ambitious project of cooperate these, under these cooperation under these four pillar areas is possible to negotiate by the end of that transitional period? Because there is an awful lot to cover. I hope that is doable. I think it's an incredible short time 
for such an ambitious plan and uh, we have to try that. Uh, I think uh, um, to prolong that uh, would be not a major problem for myself and for the parliament. But on the other side we have a problem because then it finishes the financial order, which includes Britain and this noise, uh, no new financial circle starts, so that would be easy, the easiest to do, end it at the end of 2020 and then have a complete deal. Let's try it and let's see how far we are then. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Roth. You.